let's proceed to the next section. In this section, we will discuss the nature and definition of an assurance engagement, including the essential elements of an assurance engagement. So first, we have the definition of an assurance engagement. An assurance engagement is defined as an engagement in which a practitioner expresses a conclusion designed to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users other than the responsible party about the outcome of the evaluation or measurement of a subject matter against criteria. So to explain the salient features of the definition of an assurance engagement, so we will refer to the illustration in the next slide. Now to further explain the concept of an assurance engagement, let's have the following illustration. So take note that the premise of an assurance engagement is that the decision makers, so in this case designated as the users of information, so need information about a subject matter. So for example, or example of subject matter, financial information of a company. So simply stated, subject matter is a source of information. So like financial information of the company, their financial position, their financial performance. And the users need those information to make decisions. For example, so whether to invest or to grant credit to a company. Now the information provider, in this case designated as the responsible party, will be the one who will supply that information to the users. Now, after they prepare a report, which in this case, the subject matter information, so after evaluating or measuring that subject matter against a criteria. So in our example earlier, the subject matter is the financial information of a company, okay? So that financial information will be measured by the responsible party, let's say a private company. So they will measure that financial information based on a criteria. So a good example of a criteria in measuring financial information is the accounting principles no, like PFRS. So they will measure the financial information of the company. So based on a criteria like GAAP or PFRS and they will prepare the report to be issued to the users. An example of that report is the financial statement or are the financial statements. So the financial statements is the SMI or subject matter information. So when we say subject matter information, so that is the outcome of evaluation or measurement of the subject matter against the criteria. Okay, so take note of the difference between the subject matter and the subject matter information. So the subject matter is the source of the information, like for example, the financial information. Well, the subject matter information is the report. So about that information after it has been uh, measured or evaluated against the criteria. Now, in this example, it is the responsible party or the company who is preparing the subject matter information. Like for example, the financial statements that will be provided to the users of those financial statements. So the users of financial statements, for example, are the investors and creditors. But the problem is that there is an inherent bias no, on the part of the information provider, in this case, the company, to provide information that is uh, only favorable to them or that might be only favorable to them. So because the performance of these information providers, the responsible party, will also be based on the information that they will provide to the users. So that is why the users will not normally accept the information to be provided by the responsible party at face value. So they want a third party to validate first the information before they use it for decision-making purposes. So that is where the assurance provider comes in. So the assurance provider, in this case, designated as the practitioner, will be hired to ascertain the degree of correspondence no, between the subject matter, subject matter information, and criteria. And after the practitioner satisfies himself or herself with the procedures and examination of evidence, so whether the subject matter conform or the, sub, the, the information contained in the subject matter information, 
So about the measurement of the subject matter against criteria, whether they conform with the criteria, so the practitioner will issue an assurance report. So the assurance report will contain the conclusion that will enhance the confidence of the users so about the information being provided to them. So in summary, the output of an assurance engagement is the enhanced quality no, of the information after validation of the independent third party, so which in this case is the practitioner. So that is why if we go back to the definition of assurance engagement, so we said earlier that it is an engagement wherein a practitioner expresses a conclusion. So based on our illustration earlier, so designed to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users other than the responsible party about the outcome of the evaluation of measurement of a subject matter against criteria. Now, in relation to this, so why will the public ask for assurance services from the CPA practitioner? So in this part, we will discuss the demand for assurance services. So here are some of the results. So the first one is the one that we have highlighted earlier. It's the inherent bias of the information provider to include favorable information about their performance. So that is why an independent third party will normally be called upon to validate the information before the information is used by the users. Another reason is the remoteness of the users from information providers. Most often than not, the users are separated no, from the preparers of the information. So for example, in case of uh, financial statements, so users who are outside of the entity's organization, like for example, banks or creditor, or small sharehold shareholders no, cannot directly access the information of the entity. Now their primary information will be from the reports published by the entity or provided by the entity to them. Now, either way, no, before the information can be used or can be acceptable by the user, so they will demand that the report must have been subjected to validation or examination by, the, by an independent third party. So before they can consider the information provided to them acceptable. Next, another reason is complexity of the subject matter. So sometimes the users of the financial statements are not uh, knowledgeable or expert about the subject matter. So therefore, a third party expert will lend his or her knowledge and experience so that the users may benefit from the expertise of the practitioner in determining whether the, prof the information provided to them are fairly stated in accordance with the criteria. Another is the reduction of information risk. So when we say uh, information risk, so it is the risk that the users will make an incorrect decision based on an unreliable information. The decisions that the users are making based on the information being provided to them will normally have a huge business or financial consequences. That is why as much as possible, the users want the information being provided to them are examined or validated by an independent expert. And then finally, cost of capital reduction, another reason. So on the part naman of the providers of information or information provider, so often, the higher the risk of capital, the higher will be the related cost. For example, if the bank thinks that your company is too risky to extend a loan to, the bank will charge you a higher interest. So that is why companies will often hire independent assurance provider to issue a conclusion or opinion or report so that their capital providers can consider them less risky and therefore in a position to negotiate for better interest rate or better return of capital from those capital providers. The next part, we will discuss the elements of an assurance engagement. So these elements of assurance engagement, all five of these must be present in an engagement for it to be classified as an assurance engagement. So in the absence of one or more of these essential elements, the engagement will become 
non-assurance engagement. So they, that is why they are called essential elements of assurance engagement. So they are number one, the three-party relationship. So number two, appropriate subject matter. Number three, suitable criteria. Number four, sufficient appropriate evidence. And last one, written assurance report. We will discuss in detail each element in the sections that follow.